Have you noticed you can't sleep between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m.? You try to catch your sleep, but it seems to elude you. What could be happening? You wonder if you have a health issue, but your test results say otherwise. Listen, God is the one waking you up. And this isn't without a reason. Therefore, Ensure you watch this video until the end, as I will unveil why you've been waking up between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. Before we continue, please subscribe to this channel. God loves to communicate with men. However, he won't do this at just any time. He usually comes in the cool or early hours of the day when there are fewer distractions. So, when you wake up between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m., no, there's a spiritual significance behind it. The first thing to note is that the hours between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. are free from distraction. There's nothing to obstruct whatever God wants you to do. So, what are some of the reasons why you wake up between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m.? First, God wakes you up to pray. Prayer is a powerful tool for connecting with God and seeking guidance. The power of prayer remains unmatched in its ability to bridge the gap between humanity and divinity. It is one of the weapons of your warfare as a child of God. God knows that you get so busy during the day and don't get the opportunity to commune with Him. So, He taps you in the quietness of the night so that you can effectively communicate with Him. When you pray during these hours, it's important to approach prayer intentionally. Rather than reciting a list of requests alone, take time to focus your mind and heart on God. Set aside any distractions and connect with Him. In this space of stillness, allow the Holy Spirit to lead you as you pray. Ask God to guide your prayers and to help you hear His voice. God expects you to render two prayers at this hour first, a prayer against the devil and his cohorts. In the same way that the night hours between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. are important to God, they are important to the devil as well. Don't let anyone deceive you. The devil doesn't sleep. The Bible already confirmed that he's always moving to and fro the earth, seeking whom to devour. The night hour isn't an exception. Don't forget that he's known as the prince of the power of the air. He seeks to instill confusion and fear into your heart. But God is greater than the enemy, and He has given you a weapon against Him, prayer. As the evil ones gather to plan evil against you, you must stay awake to rain counterattacks against them. Take a stand against the enemy and pray against his evil schemes. You can see this as another reason why you wake up. Use this time to pray for yourself, your loved ones, and the world around you. Whether you pray in silence or out loud, God hears. Pour your heart into Him and trust He will answer in His perfect timing. Second, use this opportunity to command and declare into your day. Matthew 13, 25 says, But while everyone was sleeping, His enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat, and went away. This happens when you enjoy the comfort of your bed throughout the night instead of staying up to pray. God has purified your tongue such that when you speak, there's manifestation. This is the power and authority you have as a child of God. Tell God how you want your day to look and ask Him for grace to carry out all your plans. Command the elements of the earth to work in your favor, and you'll see everything go well for you. Do you know why? Because God honors the words you speak. If you don't make use of the authority you have in Christ, the devil will continue to afflict you. As you stay awake in the stillness of the night, pour out your heart to the Lord in fervent supplication. Share your hopes, fears, and dreams with Him. Seek His wisdom and guidance as you surrender your burdens into His capable hands. Jacob wrestled with the angel within this same hour of the night until he received a breakthrough. Don't let this time pass you by without an evident change. Acts 16, 26 says, about midnight Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. 
At once all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. This is proof from the Bible that there's power in night prayers. Embrace it from today, and you'll witness a change in your life. As God's child, He takes you as the apple of His eyes. He cares about you and about everything that concerns you. He wants to see you prosper and excel in life. He does not want you to fall prey to the enemy's devices. He is intentional about you and about your future. So, He wakes you up to pray. You should know that God does not wake up everyone to pray. However, you enjoy it because you are special to God's heart. The disciples of Jesus Christ also enjoyed this privilege because they were dear to his heart. Luke 22, 45, 46 says, When he rose from prayer and returned to the disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? He asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Of course, the disciples could have wondered why Jesus was interrupting their sleep. Why can he not just leave them alone to enjoy their sleep like every other person in the town? In the same way, you question why God chooses to wake you up to pray when other people are sleeping in their houses. Can he not leave you alone to sleep like other people? Several times, he wakes you up to pray that you have gone back to sleep just like the disciples did. But God keeps waking you up because you are special. Samuel is another example of someone whom God woke up to pray. In his day, many people were in the temple, including Eli and his sons, Hophni and Phinehas. Yet God chose to bypass them all and woke up only Samuel. Samuel was just a regular attendant in the temple. He had finished his daily routines and duties at the temple and had retired for the day. He was sleeping when God called him. He didn't expect that God could call him, so when he heard his name, he ran to meet Eli, thinking that Eli had some assignment for him, but Eli told him he never called him. That repeated twice before Eli perceived and hinted to Samuel that God was calling him and that he should respond to God. Maybe you have been clueless like Samuel, too. You have misinterpreted God's wake-up call as a call to resume your daily assignment. That is when you remember that you have unfinished tasks from the day. That is when you think you should continue the seasonal movie you have seen for the past month. And maybe you have always gone back to sleep because you do not know what to do. Do not continue being ignorant. You should know today that God is waking you up. Like Samuel and Jesus' disciples, He wakes you to pray because He takes you as His special person. You also wake up because God desires to fellowship with you. Many times, you pray to God without consciously engaging His presence. But when God wakes you up, He wants you to have an intimate fellowship with Him. He wants you to tarry in His presence, simply loving upon Him and worshipping Him with the angels. If you are sensitive enough to engage His presence, this could lead to divine encounters with Him. One of the ways He does that is by giving you a song. Job 35, 10 says, But no one says, where is God is my maker, who gives songs in the night? Most times, when God wakes you up to pray, all you do is launch into petition and supplication. But sometimes, all He wants you to do is to sing to Him and dance before His presence. He wants you to pray to Him on His terms so He drops a song in your heart. He wants you to fellowship with Him by giving you that song. He wants you to sing and dance to Him not only when you go to church or are in the assembly of fellow believers. He also wants you to do that when you are alone in His presence, in the company of His angels. That helps to strengthen the cord of your fellowship with Him, making you more intimate with Him. You likewise wake up because God wants to share a vision with you. You are usually busy with work and your affairs on the day your heart is not settled enough to receive the vision in God's heart. And sometimes, even when you have your devotion in the morning before setting out for the day's work, you are usually in a hurry to get on with the long list of activities you have for the day that you don't pay attention to what God is trying to communicate to you. But when God wakes you up to pray, He can easily have your undivided attention and your heart is more focused on Him to hear what He has to say to you. 
When God woke Samuel up in the night, he communicated to him the vision in his heart concerning Israel and Samuel's role in fulfilling the vision. More often than not, it is in the night season that God reveals to you the vision of your life. So, whenever God wakes you to pray, you should pay attention to whatever he tells you or shows you because it might be the vision for generations. He wants you to know and understand your place in fulfilling that vision. You should position yourself like Habakkuk did to hear what God says. Habakkuk 2, 1 says, I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me, and what answer I am to give to his complaint. This should also be your stance whenever God wakes you up to pray. This will help you know and understand the vision in God's heart. Remember that Joseph could have missed out on his privileged role of being the earthly father of the world's savior if not for the vision he got from God at night. Maybe you have missed the communications of God in times past by your insensitivity. Now, you should know better that God communicates life visions at night. And you might have a peek into his vision for your life when you respond correctly to him whenever he wakes you up to pray. God also wakes you up to reveal the meaning of your dream. God might decide to speak to you through your dreams, show you things about the future, or share some instructions with you. These revelations might not be straightforward. So, to help you understand what God is trying to say, He keeps you awake to process what you've seen. As you meditate on this, you clearly understand the dream and act accordingly. Jacob found himself in such a situation. He was on the run to Laban's house when he lay on the stone and dozed off at a particular place. At one point, he dreamed of seeing angels ascending and descending. When he woke up, he thought for a while and called the place Bethel. He was able to arrive at this conclusion because God kept him awake. Have you been having dreams but lay back without meditating on them? You might be missing out on many things. Is that all there is to why you wake up between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m.? No. There's more. 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. are the best times to meet with God's angels. Angels are God's messengers, and most times, He sends them in the middle of the night. However, if you are not awake to meet with them, you might miss out on what God wants them to do in your life. You might have been praying for a particular thing. However, God wants you to sacrifice a night to receive your answers. So, his angel arrives and taps you. However, the devil also stands, on the other hand, telling you that you are too weak to engage in prayers or even do something as simple as a declaration of faith. Beloved, you must fight this with all your might because you might lose a mighty encounter or the answer to your prayers. Remember the story of Jacob and the angel. Jacob sent his family ahead and waited to wrestle with an angel. You ought to ask how he knew that an angel would appear at that location. This must have been because of the dream he had while he was traveling to Laban. The Bible says that he wrestled with the angel until it was almost daybreak. When the angel discovered he could not overcome him, he begged Jacob to let him go. Then, Jacob made a request that turned his life around. He told the angel to change his name. The angel had no choice but to answer Jacob's request. That event changed his name from Jacob to Israel. It was also at that point that Jacob received the Abrahamic covenant. Think about the huge loss that Jacob could have missed if he had not waited that night. It's your turn now. God wants you to wait at midnight for a special encounter that will change your life. Another reason why you wake up is to intercede for souls. God is all-powerful and present everywhere. He knows and sees what is happening in every corner of the earth. He knows when evil is about to happen as much as when good is happening. But he chooses to operate on earth through men. And so, while you are sleeping and ignorant of the happenings in your environment, God might wake you up to intimate you with the happenings in the world. This means He wants to operate through you, and you have to be spiritually sensitive to know and understand the promptings of God so that you can align with Him. 
Elijah was a prophet of God who could see into the king's affairs in a palace miles away from him because he was open and sensitive to God. As a result, the Israelites were saved from all the evil schemes of the wicked king because Elijah would expose the plans of the wicked king and frustrate it. In the same way, God wants you to know about the evil plans that wicked people are scheming in the night, so he wakes you up to pray against their scheme and frustrate it. Responding to this prompting could be what saves your parents from a demonic attack or your sibling who lives in another country from a genocidal attack. God also wakes you up to pray to save you from future temptations or eventualities. He sees the future and knows what the future holds. There are traps that the devil could be setting up against you that you are ignorant of. Some temptations are coming your way that you might be unable to avoid. So, God could wake you up to pray against such temptation, just as Jesus woke his disciples to pray so they would not enter into temptation. You don't have to fail like Peter, wake up. God wakes you up to build his relationship with you. The early morning hours are a sacred and precious time to draw near to God. This is a very good time to learn more about God's personality. There are deep secrets about him that you can only access when you have an intimate relationship with him. And how can you know all this? Through his word. This is a powerful way to spend the night between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. The Bible is full of wisdom and guidance for every situation in life. 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17 says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. According to this scripture, you get to see that the Word of God is not a mere book. It is God-inspired. The authors of the Bible put those words together under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It is a tool through which your faith can grow and make you more like Christ. The best way to study this Word, meditate on it, and understand it is when there are no distractions. As you pray, take time to study the Bible. Ask God to give you a scripture for that particular season of your life. As you study, allow the words of the scripture to penetrate your heart and mind. Meditate on the words you read, allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to your mind and instill wisdom in your heart. Ask God to reveal himself to you beyond the level you already know. His word says that you should call on him. He'll answer and show you great and mighty things that you don't know. As you meditate on the Word, allow God to speak to you and reveal His will for your life. But, when you fellowship with God, it isn't about hearing Him speak alone. You need to ask Him questions about your life that you need clarity about. Ask Him about His purpose for your life. When He shows you what He wants for you, ask Him for wisdom and guidance on how to go about it. Allow His Word to illuminate your mind and heart guiding you in the way that you should go. This is an opportunity to deepen your understanding of God's character and His will for your life. As you take time to fellowship with Him during this time of the night, ensure you don't stay distant from Him. Draw near to Him even as He draws near to you. Open your heart to Him and share your fears, worries, and anxieties. Tell Him your shortcomings and allow Him to teach you how to become better. Allow God to speak to you through his word so that you'll experience transformation. You also wake up because God wants you to worship him with all your heart. Worship isn't about singing hymns in a church service alone. It is a lifestyle of honoring and praising God for who he is. Psalm 34, 1 says, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. Emphasize the always in that scripture. This means that the night hour isn't an exception. It is a time when the world is still and quiet, allowing you to focus on God alone. Many people give the excuse that worshiping God within this time will disturb others. Well, that isn't a valid excuse. There is something very powerful about worshiping God in the early morning hours. It is a time when you can pour out your heart to Him giving him the praise and adoration that he deserves. 
Show gratitude and thanks to him for all his marvelous works in your life. You mustn't disturb the entire neighborhood before God hears you. The people outside your room don't need to know you're worshiping. You aren't doing it for them but for God. Worship him in spirit and truth. Declare his goodness and faithfulness over your life. Allow yourself to be completely immersed in your worship of God. Offer your whole being as a living sacrifice to him. Let your worship be sincere. Don't do it as a ritual. Rather, let it come from your heart. Remember, God doesn't judge based on a man's actions alone but on the intent of his heart. That is what determines whether he'll accept your worship or not. Let your worship rise to heaven like a sweet-smelling savor. And let it create a throne for God in your life, inviting his presence to dwell with you. Another deep reason you wake up between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. is that God wants you to plead the blood of Jesus over your life. The blood of Jesus is not just a symbol. It is a powerful reality that can cleanse and cause redemption. Through his blood, you have received forgiveness for your sins, and it is powerful enough to wipe away all sin and guilt. The blood of Jesus is a constant reminder of God's love and sacrifice for you. It is a testimony of his victory over sin and death and a source of strength and protection for you as a believer. When you pray, you can plead the blood of Jesus over your life, family, and circumstances, knowing that it has the power to cover and protect you. The blood of Jesus also gives you authority over the enemy. Revelation 12, 11 says that they triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Don't forget the story of how God spared the Israelites from the killing of the firstborn in Egypt. The story is a powerful example of God's protection. When the ruler of Egypt, Pharaoh, refused to let the Israelites go free, God sent plagues to convince him. The final plague was the most severe, where the firstborn in every Egyptian household would die. To protect the Israelites, God told them to mark their doors with the blood of a lamb. When the plague came, the homes with the blood marks were not harmed, and their firstborns were not hurt either. This story points to Jesus, who protects you from harm like the lamb's blood. When you invoke the power of the blood of Jesus in your prayers, you are standing on his victory and declaring your authority over every scheme and attack of the devil. So, when you wake up to pray at 3 a.m., remember the power of the blood of Jesus. Use it to access your authority as a believer and to stand against the plans and attacks of the devil. The blood of Jesus is your assurance of redemption, forgiveness, and victory in him. Beloved, waking up between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. is not coincidental. It is a divine appointment with the creator of the universe. And this doesn't happen to just anybody, but those whom God has chosen. So, if you're experiencing this, it means God has chosen you for a divine purpose. Embrace this sacred time and use it to deepen your relationship with God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for revealing the purpose behind my waking up this hour. I know you are right here with me. You are ready to give heed to all my requests. I know you will destroy the enemy's plans concerning my life. I open all my weaknesses and limitations to you. I ask that you please have mercy upon me. Forgive me for all my shortcomings. Block every loophole that the devil wants to capitalize on in my life. Lord, nothing is hidden from you, and you understand the problems that might hurt the good things in my life. I ask you to help me remove any difficulties I may have. Lord, I need your help. I struggle with addiction, fear, and the pain of my past. I ask for your strength to break these chains that hold me back. Please give me peace, heal my heart, and forgive my sins. I also need your help with my finances and my health. Please provide for me and heal my body. I trust in your power to set me free from all these burdens. Thank you for your love and mercy. Amen. Lord, 
I pray that you keep me awake so I will not miss my divine visitation. Jacob met your manger, but his life didn't remain the same. Daniel saw your manger and received the answers to his prayers. Therefore, I pray that you grant me the strength to wait in the middle of the night for my divine encounter. I must not lose my appointed time. I will meet with your manger and my life will not remain the same again. Lord Jesus, I come before you, recognizing the power and significance of your name. Your word declares that in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. I stand on this promise, and I break every power that is holding me down. I destroy every stronghold that does not want me to fulfill destiny. Today, I gain my freedom in Christ. I tap into the authority and victory that I have in Christ Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over my life, family, and circumstances. I declare that I am covered and protected by the blood of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for my redemption and forgiveness through his blood. I thank you, Lord, for the protection and deliverance I have through the blood of Jesus. I declare that no weapon formed against me shall prosper, for the blood of Jesus covers me. I also recognize the power of your word. Your word is sharp and powerful, defeating the enemy's schemes. Lord, I pray tonight for your peace that passes all understanding. The day comes with its chaos and pollution. I pray that you release your peace upon me right now. Help me enter this day with joy and come out still with your peace. I must walk through each day with an assurance that you are in control. Let me always bask in your presence. I use this hour to seek you passionately. Please, draw me closer to you. Help me to know you more. I choose to pitch my tent right here in the secret place. Please do not cast me away. I will keep doing your will. I will not give the devil a chance to afflict me. I will keep myself holy so you can. Always attend to my requests. Above all, I rely on your infinite mercy. Teach me how to live for you. Thank you, Father, because you've answered my prayers. In Jesus' name, I have prayed, Amen. If this video has blessed you, you can encourage us by subscribing to the channel and sharing it with others. God bless you as you do so.